Hello everybody, Mr. Mark with you, and in this video we are looking at Newton's third law of motion. Up until now, we've considered forces as being some sort of external push on an object, and we haven't really worried about what's doing the pushing. So today, we're going to worry about what is doing the pushing. So kind of consider a real simple scenario where object A exerts a force on object B. Newton's third law tells us that the force that A exerts on B is going to also cause a force from B exerted onto A. Forces always occur in pairs. And what's special about that is that those forces are always equal in magnitude. Remember, magnitude is a physics word for size. And those forces always occur in opposite directions. So oftentimes, Newton's third law will be phrased in um, terms of equal and opposite. That's referring to the force pairs. So here we have um, ubiquitous object A and object B, and they are going to run into each other. So that thing A exerts a force on thing B. So when I label that force, now sometimes I might want to include not only the name of the force, but also the thing that's causing it. So I've labeled this FB, like the force on B, and then due to A to keep track of the object that caused that force. So Newton's third law says there must be a force on A due to B that is equal in size, so absolute values to indicate size, and opposite in direction. So the blue arrow is to the right, the red arrow is to the left. I kind of indicate that really succinctly by saying negative FA due to B equals FB due to A. So when those two things interact with each other, both of them experience a force, which should make sense. If you actually collided two things like that, both things would experience a change. It shouldn't be too big of a leap to realize that when A pushes B, something has to happen in response to A. Uh, let's just say that we have these things tied together with a rope. And a rope was pulling these things together. Um, you experience a, you would see a force on B due to A, it'd be to the left in this case, and then you would have a reaction force on A due to B. They would still be the same size, and they would still have opposite directions or opposite signs. Um, even if they were being pulled together by magnets, this would still be true. If B would be pulled to the left, force on A would be to the right, and they would be the same size, equal in size, opposite in direction. So real quick clarification here. There's, there's no real cause and effect to force pairs. Um, they act simultaneously. So however long A is pushing B, B is pushing A. There's no real cause and effect. A is not the instigator, and B is not the receiver. Um, action and reaction are kind of just organizational terms. They were thinking about A running into B. A may be the thing that was moving. So in a story sense, you would say that is the cause, but the forces don't really have a cause and effect. They're simply a pair that occur simultaneously, again, equal magnitude, opposite in direction. So systems are created when you have multiple things that are held together by force pairs. Force pairs within a system just hold the system together. They do not affect the motion of the whole system. So we kind of take our rope example, and we hitch a, another rope to thing B and pull that second rope to the right with a force of 600 newtons, which is throwing some numbers for things A and B. Um, we can draw free body diagrams for these things. Like there's rope one, there's rope two pulling B to the left, and there's rope two pulling A to the right. Um, and you go, well, we have three forces that we have to consider in order to figure out what's happening in that thing. Like what's its acceleration, for example. So oftentimes when we have a system of objects, let's just think of them as being a system. And so instead of worrying about how much force the rope exerts on A or B, let's just worry about how much that one rope exerts on the entire system. So we can kind of rewrite Newton's second law like this. We can say that the acceleration of a system of objects like this one is equal to the net external force on the system divided by the mass of the whole system. So kind of just treating A and B as one thing. You can call it an object if you want. Uh, really, we should say that they are a system. 
So the, the external force is just 600 newtons caused by rope one. And together, those things have a mass of 120 grams. So together, they will have an acceleration of five meters per second squared. So by treating them as a system, we're just doing Newton's second law again. So if you are dealing with a system, any force pairs within the system are not going to affect the acceleration of that system. And so we re rewrite Newton's second law like that. The acceleration of a system is the next external force over the whole mass of the system. And then if all the parts of the system move together, every part of that system has an acceleration equal to that value whatever you get for a system. If the parts do not move together, then the center of mass has that acceleration. And we'll investigate more when we get to our momentum unit, um, how parts of a system may be moving differently. But right now, we're just going to kind of focus on that first condition where everything's kind of tied together or they're in contact with each other and they're moving as one unit. So kind of returning to our rope, we, we got the um, acceleration of that system to be five meters per second square. So the second question now is, well, how much tension is in that second rope? Maybe that second rope isn't as strong and we just want to know, is it going to break? So kind of returning to our original free body diagrams that sort of look like that, I'm going to focus on just thing A. So just thing A, the net force equation would be some of the forces equals T2. Uh, I can figure out the net force on thing A by, again, using Newton's second law, mass times acceleration. So since I've already found the acceleration of the whole system, and thing A has the, the acceleration of the system, so they're tied together, um, I can just do M times A for thing A. So 80 kilograms times 5 meters per second square gives me a tension force, tension 2, of 400 newtons which should make sense. It should be less than 600 because it's accelerating a smaller thing than the whole system. It's only accelerating part of the system. So this is actually something that I can check. I can go back to the second object, B in this case, and I can run Newton's second law again, like figure out that the sum of the forces on thing B is just T1 minus T2. Substitute in the numbers that we just got a second ago, 40 kilograms in this case, um, and you see that the left side of the equation is 200 newtons. And on the right side, 600 minus the 400 newtons we just calculated using thing A gives me another 200 newtons. So because both sides of those equations come out to be the same, um, I know that I've done it correctly. So just like systems in algebra, um, you can um, use one thing to solve, whatever you're looking for, and the other thing to check your work, which I always think is a handy thing. So internal force pairs cannot be analyzed by thinking about a system. You have to drill back to the original object or objects that you have. Because internal forces act on two things within a system, you can use either one of them to do the analysis um, and then use the other one as a check if you're able to. So consider a book at rest on a desk. A very common question is, is this a force pair? And at first glance, it kind of looks like it because you have an arrow going up and you have an arrow going down and they're the same size, which is kind of the equal and opposite thing that we've been talking about. But this, in fact, is not a force pair. And it's not a force pair because the things that, the, that are causing those forces are not the book. The book cannot push itself. So the downward arrow is the force due to gravity. And the thing that causes gravity is the Earth, the giant rock under your feet. So the reaction to Earth pulling the book down would be the book pulling the Earth up. And then likewise for that normal force. The normal force is caused by the desk. So the desk pushes the books up. The books push the desk down. Those are the force pairs to those two forces. So it is important to remember that force pairs act on different objects. When you push something, you have to push something else because the reaction force is going to be back on you. This is why something can't push itself because if the force and re if the action and the reaction are the same thing, they would just balance each other out. So let's look at another example. Here I've got a thing of mass M on a surface, horizontal surface like a table, and then a string 
from that thing uh, to a second thing of mass 2m, and then there's a pulley that's redirecting the string. There is friction between the first thing and the surface, and I'm curious as to learn what that thing's acceleration is. So A1 is my question mark. So if we go ahead and consider Newton's second law, um, because these things are moving together, um, A1 would be equal to the acceleration of the system, which is the net external force over the mass of the whole system. So this example was relatively complex. I've got six different forces going on. Which forces are external to the system and are changing the acceleration of the system? So it's important to realize first that the tension in the string it has part of a force pair that is internal to the system. The tension is acting on thing one, and it's also acting on thing two. So that internal force pair does not affect the acceleration. You may be going, well, how are those force pairs in different directions or opposite directions? So the pulley is redirecting the direction that the string moves in. And so when we have a pulley, what we typically do is we use the pulley to change the direction of the axis that we're considering. So for thing one, the blue thing, positive X would be to the right. For thing two, the red thing, positive X would be down. And so for the blue thing, the tension is in the positive X direction. For the red thing, the tension is in the negative X direction. So the pulley is changing what we would consider to be directions as far as up, down, left, and right are concerned, but it's not changing which way is positive and negative for the motion of the system. The next thing we have to realize is that the normal force and the gravitational force on thing one are not in the axis of motion. So because they're parallel to the direction that thing one is accelerating, they're not going to affect its acceleration. So all that boils down to these two forces left over, the gravitational force on thing two and the frictional force on thing one. So to do the acceleration of the system, the net force is F2G minus F friction 1, and then the mass of the system will be the two masses added up. Um, the gravitational force on the red thing would be 2mg. The frictional force on the blue thing would be mu times the normal force, and it's equal to mg. They balance each other. And then m plus 2m in the denominator for the mass of my system. So kind of combining those terms on the bottom, the system has a mass of 3m. And then I can kind of factor out the mg in my numerator if I wanted to, if necessary. Um, and then I can actually cancel out the m's eventually, which is kind of neat. So as long as you have this set up in a 1 to 2 ratio, you're kind of always going to get the same thing. I get a final answer of 2 thirds g and then 2 minus mu k um, next to that. So what I've done here is I've taken a system that had six total forces in it, and kind of eliminated some of those by carefully choosing the direction of motion and carefully choosing my system so that only two of them actually affected the motion of that system. So to kind of wrap things up here, um, what should we learn from all this? The first is that forces always occur in pairs. These pairs are always equal in magnitude, remember magnitude means size, and opposite in direction. These forces act on different objects, and most misconceptions about Newton's third law are cleared up just by remembering that. The force pairs refer to forces acting on different objects. We analyze the acceleration of a system by considering the net external force, eliminating the internal force pairs, and then we just use the mass of that entire system. And if we need to analyze forces within a system, we first need to figure out what the motion of the system looks like, what way is it accelerating? How much is it accelerating? And then consider an internal object. So just remember, every time you push something, it's pushing you back. So don't be a bully and let people pass in the lunch line. Till next time, go talk.